I don't think it's been touched. Look over here. That can there, it's probably been here five years. I don't really think they've taken my complaint seriously. It wasn't until Steve threatened Barnet Council with an abatement order that, seven weeks later, the mess was eventually cleared away. You could dismiss a lot of littering as thoughtless laziness, but there's one form of littering that's both criminal and deliberate. Fly tipping. But, yet again, there seems to be a distinct lack of will to engage with the problem. Steve Denany farms 1,200 acres on the outskirts of Manchester. He spends nearly as much on clearing rubbish off his land as he does in rent. I'm sort of speechless. I mean, this is, this is just amazing. I mean, this is just crap. It's just this yeah. horrible, filthy household. Yeah, I mean, this... What, what, where, where would this have come from? What's the story behind this? We do find, actually, there's a lot of things like tyres, uh, fridges, gas bottles, things that people have to pay to get rid of. Annually, councils pay £73 million to clear up fly tipping, and it costs private landowners another £47 million. Yet the prosecution rate is abysmal. But how, many, how often do people come onto your land and... and oh, every, every week. Every, every week. week? Yeah, yeah. I've actually seen a van tipping one day. Just a, a, a pickup, just tipped the whole lot up and, and shot off, and I chased after him. And he was going that fast, you would not believe. He just he was wanting to get away as quick as he could. Right. And I rang a neighbouring farmer to block the road, which he did do with his machine. And he said he went round it that fast, he hit, hit his truck as he went past him. And do you ever look through it? Do you ever find...? Uh... Yeah, we found bits of paper here and there, the addresses and stuff, but um, we sort of called the police and given give it to him, but uh, I don't know whether anything has gone from that. So you, they, you hear nothing more from them? No. no. <laughs> This is a crime that's committed 2.6 million times a year and costs us in excess of 120 million pounds a year to clear up. You'd think that the authorities would be all over this, catching the perpetrators and finding them robustly. Yet according to Defra's own figures, 70% of local authorities have not prosecuted a single fly tipper in the last five years. I've had experience in my constituency of organised criminals who were dumping huge quantities of fly tips in ways that they could not possibly be apprehended over a long period of time. And so the surveillance that was necessary to do this and to bring them to justice took a long time. It was very difficult. They went round with sawn off shotguns, so people were intimidated. So, you know, this is not sometimes an easy matter or a straightforward one. Actually, it's very straightforward. People dump rubbish because they know there's virtually no chance of being caught. With fly tipping rising by 50% each year and the clean-up bill hitting £200,000, tiny Carmarthenshire Council in Wales decided to treat fly tipping like the crime it is. Date of birth, 1006. Fly tipping. This is called smart water, and what this is in effect is a water which contains a unique DNA formula. And what we do is we apply it to the load. If it is uh, dumped in the countryside and not disposed of correctly, we can uh, shine the UV light across, and then from that we can uh, match it back to the bottle then at the time that we applied it. Who's the registered keeper of the vehicle? Do you have a waste carriage licence? No, I don't. As well as stop checks, Paul's team tracked down fly tippers. Last year, they launched 650 investigations. Prosecutions are up, and fly tipping is down nearly 40%. The purpose of this roadside check is to ascertain whether or not... Most of these drivers have either got proper documents or have applied for them. Hello, sir. What stuff you got in here, then, mate? A bit of scrap copper pipes. That's all I've been saving for the white liquor. Well, up to... Um... It's, not, it's not a trick question, Will. No, no, but it is, you know, you can check with you, if you really yeah. can check with you guys. Yeah. Are you aware that whenever you transport waste, you have to have a written description of that waste with you? No. I... OK, you, you don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. If you do not... This individual has been stop-checked, as you can see, and he will be prosecuted for not having the written description of the waste with him at the time. This is a relatively minor offence, but Paul's found that by encouraging people to get the correct paperwork, he's breaking the connection between casual waste carriers and fly tipping. We can tackle people who are illegal waste carriers and, uh, and prosecute them. And what we've seen is there has been a, a big increase in the amount of applications for waste carriers' licences. And we've also seen that there has been a reduction in the amount of fly tipping. But nationally, there's only about a 1 in 1,800 chance of being prosecuted. 
so there's absolutely no deterrent for fly tipping. If we manage to catch just 2% of the people who do the fly tipping, and that doesn't seem too ambitious a target for such a visible and oafish crime, and find them just 1 20th of what the law actually allows, that would raise over 130 million pounds for the economy. Alternatively, we can do as we are at present and stand mutely by and just watch as another 50,000 heaps of squalor are added to the landscape every week. Litter is not just an unsightly national disgrace and hideously expensive to remove. There's also undeniable evidence that there is a link between litter and crime. It's a public broadcast. We'll go to the return to CCTV control. Thank you. When Middlesbrough Council asked its residents what their biggest public safety worries were, they were astonished by the results. And we're, it was originally expected that crime and a fear of crime would be the first one in two. Um, we were quite surprised that littering was number one. In the city centre, they dealt with it by installing new cameras that could warn litter bugs that they were being watched. Once the speakers went in, they couldn't believe what was happening, and I think it was out of embarrassment more than anything else that they complied with what we've done. In Middlesbrough, litter has become an indicator of other potential problems, such as arson, vandalism, and graffiti. Ray Mallon became famous as Robocop, proponent of the zero tolerance policy. This is like a war. And when he became mayor of Middlesbrough, he decided that tackling litter was essential if he was going to bring pride back to the city. What we're trying to do in Middlesbrough is prick the conscience of the public and basically say to them, look, you've got to care about your town and you've got to have more pride in the town. So consistently reinforcing the same messages, put the litter in the bin. Targeting litter has led to other benefits. Residents' fear of crime has diminished. For example, if you have one broken window, it indicates that we don't care. So you'll get a second broken window and a third broken window. And it just indicates that society doesn't care about the society that they live in. So I can actually acquaint crime to litter. These back alleys used to be strewn with litter, plagued by arson attacks, a no-go area for residents. Hello, hello, sorry. But clearing up the litter and installing security gates has turned around the lives of the householders. This is lovely. This is really nice. This is, I didn't expect this. It's really, really nice. It's, it's, tell me what it was like before all this. Tell me, what was it like compared with now? Uh, very distressing for residents that have lived here for a long time because uh, the house prices dropped, they just plummeted. Mm -hmm. And it was because antisocial behaviour was getting such a hold and it just got really desperate. And crime, was quite high. Yes, crime was high. Crime was yes. high. Um, I just wondered whether instilling this kind of pride in the neighbourhood leads to people dropping less litter. And if you can keep the streets clean, it'll have a knock-on effect on everything else, on your antisocial behaviour. People feel safer, they're more proud of the area, they'll fight for it, they'll report things, you know, they'll, they'll start talking to the neighbours again. I just, it's such a huge impact. The whole thing about it is it feels safer, don't you think? It goes back to this balance of enforcement, intervention, cajoling people, pricking the conscience. Now, when you've got the will, then it's amazing what you can do. Middlesbrough's example sums up what I've learned on my trip around this island. Litter is a problem that can be easily solved. It's not like trying to cure cancer or global warming. I've met people who have actually beaten it. It's just that their lead isn't being followed. Britain has an excellent framework of anti-litter and anti-fly tipping legislation, but the laws aren't being vigorously enforced. It really only takes two things to crack the litter problem. You've got to stop people dropping it in the first place, and when it gets dropped, you've got to get it picked up. Nobody wants to live in a country that's only beautiful from the ankles up.